Upload your doubts on the app to get video solutions. Great thick long wire of uniform cross section of radius A. So let's imagine it like this. This is our wire, okay? And its cross section is this one. And the radius from here to here is A, correct? Is carrying a steady current I. The current flowing through this wire is how much? I. Current is simply the electrons which are moving inside this wire, right? Use Ampere circuit a law to obtain a relation showing the variation of magnetic field inside and the outside the wire with distance R less than A, R greater than A, the field point from the center of, okay, uh, cross section and plot that we will see later. Okay. Now pay attention. This is very, very important because here we will use some core concepts. If this is a wire and we are considering a loop, okay, first let's start with R greater than A. So first I am taking here for R greater than A. Let's say the current which is flowing here is I. Clear? R greater than A means if this is A from the center, the cross sectional area is A, then R greater than A means everything outside A. Like if I take from the center, up till here it is A, correct? Up till here it is A, from here to here, correct? The radius. If R is greater than A, then you can imagine R outside this wire, any loop. So only why this much? You can choose this much also. Doesn't make any difference, correct? So this outside loop, what is the radii of this loop? R. For R greater than A, what will be the magnetic field at that point? At a distance R from the center of this wire? Using Ampere's law, B dot DL is equals to mu naught current enclosed by the loop. Which loop? The outer loop. How much current is flowing through this outer loop? I. Great. Now, when you integrate this, bio people, you have to assume that I am correct. Maths people, you know that when you integrate the length along this whole circular part, its integration must be 2 pi r. If you have done application of integrals, correct? So, integration of dl, the length, will be the complete length, which is 2 pi r, correct? The circumference of this circular part. This is equals to mu naught i. And magnetic field B at any point will be mu naught i by 2 pi r. Now, listen very, very carefully this part conceptually. <clears throat> if I imagine a loop much, much greater than the previous loop, like this loop, here the value of R will increase? Yes. So as I am going away from the wire, listen very carefully, as I am going away from the wire, the R value increases, rest all are same. Mu naught doesn't change. Current is fixed through that loop. 2 pi is fixed. So as I am going away from the wire, outside the wire, the magnetic field is inversely proportional to R. You can see that from the above expression. If you remove this proportional sign, you will get mu naught i by 2 pi. That's a constant for a given wire if the current is fixed, right? I'm not sending any variable current here. Okay. So this is the case for R greater than 0. Okay. B is inversely proportional to R. Done. Now what about inside the wire? That you have to be little careful. So let's imagine the same wire. And let me make a larger part, okay? Let's zoom it a little bit. The same wire, let me repeat again. It's the same wire, but I am zooming it. Why zooming it? So that I can understand the core concept of this part little bit more clearer. So if this is the same wire with the same cross-sectional area A, sorry, radii A, <coughs> correct? Of this cross-section A. What we have to do now is we have to find the magnetic field inside this wire. <coughs> so what will be the magnetic field inside this wire? Let's assume that this is the R. This is the R. If I imagine this circular loop like this inside this wire, then what will be the magnetic field due to the electrons which are flowing this? Now listen very carefully, if magnetic field you are finding across this smaller loop R, 
this magnetic field will be responsible only due to the electrons which are passing through this loop correct the electrons which are going here they are not responsible for that magnetic field because ampere's law says integral of b dot dl is equal to mu naught times the current enclosed by the loop let's call it as ie what is ie current enclosed by that particular loop previously no matter what is the size of the loop in the previous explanation if you are taking anyways all the loops are outside the wire so the current remains same you can see no matter how large you are making but here inside the loop the current flowing through this cross section will be different from current flowing through this cross section will be different from current flowing through this cross section right or if you imagine are much smaller like this cross section now the less number of electrons are passing through the loop so be very careful when you are taking r less than a so i am writing here for r less than a clear but sir integration will result in the same thing yes integration of dl will again give you the same thing b dot 2 pi r equals to mu naught ie be very careful you have to calculate here ie first because the current is not i current through this whole cross section here that is i the total current passing through this loop that is i but current passing through this is ie how to figure it out now for this we will make use of concept from third chapter current electricity what is the concept that the current density when a current is flowing through a constant wire with a uniform cross section the current density remains same so what is current density current per unit area so current flowing through this outer section what is that that is i upon pi a square pi a square is the larger cross section will be equal to the current in the smaller section divided by the area of the smaller section in this case it will be pi r square and we can find here which implies ie will be equals to pi pi cancels the total current which is flowing through the wire times r square okay upon a square clear so let's plug this here and we will get magnetic field b dot 2 pi r equals to mu naught times what's our ie i r square upon a square okay as you can see directly here this r value is small compared to a and since r is small its square will be much smaller and a is large its a square will be much larger when you divide this quantity will become small in decimals and when you multiply current with that in decimals this overall value will be smaller than i always be very careful okay this was logically checking that yes we are getting less current through that small piece of cross section now when you take 2 pi on the other side it will be mu naught by 2 pi one of the r will cancel out i r upon a square for a given wire when a current is flowing what are the parameters not changing mu naught not changing 2 pi not changing i is not changing because current i is the total current a is not changing because that's a fixed wire cross sectional radius is fixed r is changing we can because we can imagine the smaller loop we can imagine this much loop we can imagine this huge loop only for these loops the current will be varying if you are taking a loop outside the current is not varying no matter how large you are taking because that encloses the whole wire so current is fixed in that case so be very careful with this so here if this is there then we can say that b is proportional to r so magnetic field increases as r increases from the center of this okay now how to plot this let's conclude the whole thing pay attention with the this is the graph which you have to plot as per the question this is our magnetic field b this is our r zero zero means from the center we are going up till a so see what happens a is the last point okay so this whole problem is divided into two p parts from 0 to a from here to here as you are going what is happening as you are going from 0 to a here 
the magnetic field is proportional to r means as the r increases b also increases so the slope is like this so the graph will look like this yes this is directly proportional graph i hope you people know this whenever two quantities are directly proportional the graph will look like this and what about outside when r becomes greater than a beyond this point beyond this point a then the graph is let's go back to our previous slide so b is inversely proportional to r as per this box so as r increases b decreases so you can draw the inversely proportional graph let me just plot it okay little bit like this so curve will be like this so here b is inversely proportional to r here b is directly proportional to r and a is our that point beyond which this is happening and before which this is happening clear so this was a very interesting and many times repeated question from ampere's law textbook example it is watch the complete playlist on the app pions download the app now